Well, after several months, I finally completed this Class D amplifier project. Now, expect if you've watched my videos before, you're getting fed up with seeing this case, which is now the fourth one I've used in various incarnations of these, of these amplifiers. Now, we were waiting for the on-off switch, which came in three weeks, quite a long time, but um, to be fair to the distributor of this product, there's been a few problems and each time it's been resolved without question, so no problem there. There's been a few changes, so I'll just show you what they are. This is the loudspeaker protection board, which I had originally fitted and is one of the more expensive ones that I've actually used. And this one is noticeable that it um, optical couplers here. But like all these products, you can't get circuit diagrams for it. And the main reason I purchased this is because the grounds here are not common. Insofar as if I put a ground wire here, it doesn't short over to this ground wire. And for many amplifiers, it's desirable that they don't because you only want the the earth return from your speaker to go to a star point on your power supply. So shorting them on here doesn't exactly create an earth loop but can cause problems with buzzes and stuff like that. So I thought this was a better module to use. But I also mentioned in the first video on this series that my knowledge of class D is, shall we say, not intensive or extensive even. <laughs> Can't even speak English, which is a bit sad, really. Um, the problem I found with this module or using this module, there's nothing actually wrong with the module at all. In fact, it performs really nicely. When you are running very high power in excess of 100 and something watts, at very low frequencies, i.e. five or six cycles, or hertz if you prefer, the module will think that's DC and will click in. Now, in real life, that won't really be a problem because there, are, there isn't much information in music at five or six hertz. But nevertheless, um, a sudden transit or something like that. And I did find that when I was pulsing the amplifier at such a low frequency at high power, the protection relays would come in. And the only explanation I can think of is that because such a low frequency is almost DC, the module tends to think it is DC. Now, initially, I thought there may have been a problem with the amplifier in that at very high power at such low frequencies, it maybe goes unstable and you're getting DC offset. So that would obviously make the module know there's a problem and switch off. But I've tested that and the actual DC offset on this amplifier is a couple of millivolts at worst and in many cases almost unmeasurable with a standard meter. Obviously, if you've got five or six digits, you can probably measure it, but it's still a couple of millivolts at worst, which is probably one of the best I've ever seen, and particularly that there's no adjustment for it. So what I've done, I've removed the module. Initially, that worried me, thinking, well, if something goes wrong with the amplifier, we're going to get DC on the speaker terminals. But looking at the amplifier specs, they do have a degree of protection in them insofar as they will shut down if the rails become unbalanced or it's over or under voltage. A couple of extra fuses, which is literally one in series with each of the positive output leads. And I fused it initially at two amps quick blow now, it depends on how much power and whether you're driving 4 ohms. Obviously, the lower the value fuse within reason, obviously you wouldn't put 200 milliamps or something silly like that. 
Um, but if you're going to sine wave drive it, and I would ask, why would you want to do that? Because I've already done that. For music power, I've, I've put in two amp fuses on an eight ohm loads, and you can you can play that pretty loud. But if you're going to play it continuously at high level, you may need to up that to um, maybe as much as five amps. But obviously, the lower it is, the better the protection would potentially be. Initially, I thought I'd put these fuses on the back panel, but Really, unless you're going to have a problem in the amplifier, in which case you'd need to open it anyway, once you've selected the correct value fuse, it's not going to blow. And if it does blow, you really need to look inside the amplifier. Now this particular transformer, apart from having the high voltage ratings for the actual amplifiers themselves, which incidentally, just to remind you, is 50 naught 50 and that's what the amplifiers are very happy with. But down here, I can poke my fingers in there because it's not plugged in, but basically the secondary windings, which, I, which I'm not using, I've just bundled them up down here so that if future times I want to get it, I haven't got to mess with the transformer and, and rewire everything. I really need to correct something I said in one of the first videos on this subject when I had the amplifiers purely on a tray. And I said that the amplifiers were a little noisy, hiss wires. And I need to correct that now because when I first tested this, I just put the um, input straight from the DAC output into the amplifier. And I didn't have a, a gain control on it at all. I, I controlled it from the computer. And if you don't load the input to a sensible level, which effectively was more or less open circuit pr previously, you do get hiss from the amplifier. And the reason I didn't worry about it at the time is that in my experience some class d amplifiers needless to say some of the cheaper ones do tend to be noisy i fitted the alps pot which is a 50k in this case across the input it's completely silent and and i have to say initially i didn't even think it was working because i turned on the power and um, i couldn't hear anything coming out now, I did mention earlier that I'd remove the on delay and speaker protection board. The only effect of this is when you first turn it on, you get a very slight sort of noise. That's probably not a very good simulation, but it's a very low level and it's purely the class D switching itself on basically because of the way it works. I wouldn't have said it was objectionable and it, there's no DC artifacts or anything nasty, but you do hear it um, if you're pretty close to the speaker, if you're the other side of the room and it lasts, it's literally zzz, a little sound like that. For me, it's not a problem, but if you felt that you didn't like that, then a speaker delay module of a couple of seconds might be desirable. Switching it off makes no sound at all, so I think it it's fine, to be honest. I, I, I wouldn't just say that's a problem at all. To my amazement, I found myself liking the sound. Um, it's very clean, crisp, and copious amounts of power. My previous thoughts on this were Class D, it's going to get loud, but it's not going to sound that good. But I have to say, these, these, these sound really very good. And when you consider how you could make these, say you want the best quality for the minimum amount of money, you buy two modules, you don't buy a power transformer, you use a switch mode power supply, and then you don't need this rectifier module. You don't need 
any more heat sinks because these are the heat sinks and this is the thing that's very hard for me to get my head around because if you're used to class a b amplifiers having a heat sink like this that gets warm doesn't get hot gets warm in fact these transistors here get hotter than the heat sink here that's why i put these clips on if you recall but nothing gets hot the things that get hot are that inductor which is in the output circuitry and that gets pretty pretty hot actually it's you can still touch it don't get me wrong it's not you're not going to burn your fingers on it but it's the hottest component in there and it doesn't matter whether because obviously it's removing the, the carrier so it's active all the time so to speak and driving it hard doesn't make it any hotter and the same applies to this heat sink um, it, it, it's weird because everybody quotes um, the efficiency of class D and they do claim something like 93 percent but to clarify that at low power it's not efficient at all because the basic drive circuit and the switching circuitry is running at the same power is not the right word but it's there and at low power of maybe say a watt or so the efficiency is probably and this is a, a probably on my part um, probably much the same as a class a b amplifier it's only really when you start giving it some stick and I think from memory it quotes at about 100 watts the efficiency is up to, as the magic word, up to 93%. Which means, as opposed to a class AB amplifier, the harder you drive it, the hotter it gets. This doesn't get any hotter. Because if, if you work out the power yourself, if it's developing 100 watts and it's 93% um, efficient, those heat sinks have only got a couple of watts on them, 10 watts at the most, and not even 10 watts, because obviously that's talking about sine wave, but in music power, 100 watts peak, it, it doesn't draw hardly, um, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't get hot. And that's something that's very hard to sort of think about. But going back to the efficiencies and things, these heat sinks on here aren't even connected. There's nothing on the heat sinks at all. And it's purely I bought this case because to buy it without the heat sinks, believe it or not, costs more. Because this is a standard case which I've used many times and I've bolted power transistors to this in the past. But there's nothing to bolt to it. So you could theoretically mount it in a cardboard box or a wooden box. So if you wanted to build the cheapest way possible, switch mode power supply, two of these modules, Alps pot, and you're in business. So there you have it really. I'm sorry this has been 99% waffle, not even as good as the amplifier efficiency, but I wanted to put a, a line through this and the amplifier's finish, and I haven't decided yet whether I should keep it because I'm interested in getting some of these ICE power modules on paper look incredible but I'm, I'm in the process at the moment of, of talking with the manufacturers of these in Denmark and I want to find out whether the ones on eBay are knockoffs that I mean they, they proclaim to be the genuine models and I think they some of them could be because they're not cheap but um, they do give very good performance on paper and other manufacturers are, are full you see them used in amplifiers costing eight or nine hundred dollars so once they've had the mic treatment and plonked into a case like this we could have something a bit good so there we go i'm going to leave it there and it's up to you if you want to play with these things or not the transformer i got on here is grossly overpowered 
um, even when you're caning it, I've had this running on sideways for an hour, both channels driven. My heat, uh, my load box gets too hot to touch, but the transformer is stone cold. And because it's a 500 watter, um, the voltage drop that goes into the rectifier block is almost nothing. So, and the fact these rectifier smoothing board uses shocky diodes, the voltage drop across them is even less than standard diodes. So the actual power going to the modules, or the voltage I should say, going to the modules remains very close to the 50, 50 mark. Uh, 